Welcome to Earth Common Journal, The Launch Pod, where we invite authors, dignitaries, and guests to discuss our annual theme in an on-the-ground podcast series. In Volume 8, we discuss the shift of climate change to climate adaptation. We're your hosts, Jacqueline Ohm and Cole Kosh, and this is The Launch Pod. <laughs> We speak to Maxim Kodchik, a visiting student from Ukraine, majoring in poli sci at McEwen University. So we have a prompt today, which is to discuss our thoughts when it comes to climate change and yeah. climate adaptation. And if you'd like to share any of your opinions or even questions that we can mm-hmm. have a little conversation around. Uh, I was thinking, like when I w- was waiting for to come here, uh, I was thinking about the aspect of climate change when it comes to war, and that's for some reason, even right now, that not a lot of people talk about outside of Ukraine, like uh, how it affects national parks, how it affects the soil, how it la- how it will later affect like the migration of wildlife throughout the territories, and how like uh, even after World War II, there are still like mines exploding somewhere in Europe. Uh, so it the same will happen for the wildlife for like large mammals, for example, at the U- Ukrainian territory. Um, and yeah, and there's, for example, like the largest national park, kind of national preservation area. Uh, I- it contains, for example, a large population of bison, um, which is maybe one of the largest in Europe. Uh, and and it's also it, it's kind of a, l- a large part of it is in, in the o- occupied territories. So it's also a question uh, how much of the kind of t- total population of wildlife, different species, will uh, stay alive there. And yeah, I think that's like one of the issues of a- adaptation and climate change that needs to be addressed to in the future. Hmm. How do you think about your position in that? Like, has it changed since you come o- you've come over to um, to Canada and had that perspective of your your homeland and what you want to do with your um, political future career? Mm, I'm not sure. I'm really interested in t- in like po- politics, although I'm studying political science. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm not quite like the practical side of it. You know when. Uh, it's kind of uh, starting to uh, exhaust when you're not spectating, but you're part of major <laughs> historical events. <laughs> 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 yeah, and um, I was think like what I'm thinking about. Can you repeat your reframe? Maybe your question. Yeah. About like my part of y- you mean you meant like in the context of. Uh, climate and Ukraine and all of this. Yeah, so you were talking about the impacts that war has on the climate and the yeah. ecological system, yeah. animals, plants, mines, landscapes, yeah. humans that will um, be impacted for years to come. Mm-hmm. And perhaps going through this, being very close to this topic, and you know, you've you were studying political you are studying political science and has it changed in what you want to do so there seems to be like opportunities f- for example having to do with how ukraine will recover yeah. itself uh I, I think that as of right now it just changed that cur- like before i maybe donated a couple of times throughout like eight years uh, to different charitable foundations that supported like Ukrainian military or just some different uh, it, there's for example a ch- charitable f- organization called U y- 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 animals and like U A meaning Ukraine uh, and it supports a lot of uh, dog shelters different uh, e- ecological initiatives and I so like I went on different marches. Uh, for for like march marches for animals it was called um, so I was thinking just to support all of this more informationally just this aspect 
not of supporting o only military, but also the ecological aspect of the country. And I know that there's still, although it's war, there's a lot of volunteers in the ecological side of it to provide like food for dog shelters, for national parks, so that the animals in like national parks will not starve. Um, and yeah, it's mo it's mostly about raising awareness to like of the wild to this eco like large uh, territory, like large uh, kind of e ecology on a large territory impacted by war and how it needs like additional funding to be supported, to be maintained. And I think that's the main thing for all the world to unite, not only like Europe, but also maybe Canada, maybe the States and all the parts to when it comes to large territories. Yeah. Mm. Do you think sometimes that it has to take a war or a huge disaster um, for people to make changes and to try and conserve? And uh, I think that when it like if we are talking here about nature, then the war is the most unnatural thing to happen. So I think it's it definitely does not have to be war to for something to change. It can be some revolution, it can be some lo lo massive scale protests, but war is just like something not humane, not uh, human-ish, not just, uh, it's not, from when you're just spectating, it can be seen like as a researcher, as trigger of some changes, but it also comes with, for example, a large mental health crisis that will affect like the capa capacity of different people to do certain things just uh, in regards to their mental health and yeah 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 i think we were having a conversation earlier about how uh, do we have to wait for big things in order to affect change like could we maybe not have to suffer through you know the impacts from something so negative that are long tailed meaning it's going to go for years to come like you just talked about um, with mental health that will mm -hmm. impact how people can recover or change and do we need to go that far into something so awful in order to really try and struggle to come out of it and make change happen or can we in peaceful times make something happen and inspire each other to change things systematically like I think it can speed up a lot of processes in both uh, ecological, like uh, an environmental aspect in maybe a security aspect of the world, like how it currently the war in Ukraine reinvented kind of NATO, e European Union, uh, different organizations that support just uh, humi humanitarian needs and how uh, and how, yeah, how the war is not just about devastating, but it's also about recovering. It's also about rebuilding after and not waiting until the end of the war to start rebuilding, but starting it now. Because if you wait all these years, then you just waste them and you don't use them to rebuild the uh, ecosystem, the buildings, the just people in general and their financial kind of grounds. Well, I'm, I've, I've heard a lot of the, the fields for farming there were completely filled with mines, too. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, that, that's going to be a large, large project. And even the bay. The bay was filled with mines, too, right? So getting ships out with, with grain and whatnot, too, is a difficult process. And also, when we are, like, a lot of people talk that if, it's, if there's a lot of dead Russian soldiers, then it's, it means a lot of fertilizers. But the, the reality is that it's, like, the kind of corpse liquid that come out of p uh, that people are actually extremely harmful for the soil. So it's also a c part of the question, not only mines, not only people randomly exploding when farming later on, but, uh, but also just how useful will those grounds will be for plants, for animals, for people to use these grounds. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it seems to be a thought about um, not only what one action might result in, but three steps forward. Okay, yeah. fertilizer, but no, but but also this and how this will impact. Um, 
it's a very it's a more complicated system than I guess we give it credit for. Um, yes, yes. And it just needs to be addressed in, in information wise. Yeah. No. Mm. Do you see yourself doing that when you complete your degree? Like I was working like separately from my degree as a journalist back at home, so I was thinking to just continue to work with text and to continue to make meaningful texts uh, that is kind of uh, inspire people to look into something, to research something, to change their mind about something. So that's what I was and will be probably interested in. Yeah. Well, I wish you the best of luck. Yeah. I hope it goes well. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you for listening to Earth Common Journal's The Launch Pod. I've been Jacqueline Ohm. I've been Cole Kosh. And stay tuned for our next episode.